right, ladies and gentlemen, we're getting into standard 9B. Standard 9B, you should be able to explain the emergence of capitalism as a dominant economic pattern and the subsequent development of socialism and communism. So the essential understandings. Capitalism and market competition fueled the Industrial Revolution. Wealth increased the standard of living for some. Social dislocations associated with capitalism produced a range of economic and political ideas, which include socialism and communism. So reforming the industrial world, setting the stage. The Industrial Revolution caused the gap between the rich and the poor to grow. Business leaders felt that the government should stay out of their affairs, but reformers felt that the government intervention was necessary to fill in the gap. So the philosophers of industrialization. New ideas about economics began to emerge during the Enlightenment. One of the most influential ideas was that of a laissez-faire government. Laissez-faire is an economic policy of letting owners of industry set their own working conditions without government interference. So let the people do as they please. The big person we need to know in this section is Adam Smith. He was a Scottish economist who set down the workings of capitalism. He wrote a book called The Wealth of Nations in 1776. In there, he wrote that the economy works best when natural forces of supply and demand operate without government interference through free competition. That, again, is that term laissez-faire. He also wrote in there that all individuals are striving for their own self-interest, which adds up to the common good, and that competition are quality goods at low prices. There's a reason why we have a bajillion brands of shoes for you to choose from. It's that's because there's competition. You might want the shoe that is the cheapest, or you might want the shoe that is of better quality and a bit more expensive, but this whole uh, competition bit, that is for us to be able to choose which good we want at which price. Then we have efficient producers make more profit, they hire more workers, and they expand to everyone's benefit and there is a negative result and that is an unequal distribution of wealth and a poor working class so here in the united states of america we are a capitalist society we have a bunch of different jobs out there and we are able to get our education to get a job in a certain field and we make a certain amount of money uh, as a teacher i make a certain amount of money Maybe uh, a doctor, which we all know makes much more than a teacher, but a doctor makes a certain amount of money and those people get education to get into that field. So a doctor ends up making more money than a teacher. That is an unequal distribution of the wealth of the country. So doctors make more than teachers and maybe teachers make more than um, a retail worker at let's say Hollister all right so everybody makes a different amount of money depending on which job they have so here is a painting of Adam Smith here is his book the wealth of nations and here's a fun little poster that uh, allows us to see the different types of goods we get to choose from on a daily basis that we might take for granted. Um, we've got, you know, like 20 different fast food restaurants to choose from, 50 different sodas to choose from, 20 different cars to select from. You know, we've got so many different goods. We are very fortunate here in the Americas, especially North America, where we have all of these choices to choose from. Uh, what foods we eat, what shoes we buy, 
anything you think of, multiple options, where in other parts of the world they might only have a choice or they might only have three different shoes to choose from. They have fewer options. So as a reminder, this gentleman that you see here in this poster, this is our Uncle Sam, the kind of cartoonish character of this gentleman who represents the United States of America. All right, so what is capitalism? Capitalism is an economic system in which the factors of production are owned privately and money is invested in business ventures to make a profit. And we have market competition. So in economics, competition is the rivalry among sellers trying to achieve such goals as increasing profits, market share, and sales volume by varying the elements of the marketing mix. So price and product and distribution and promotion are all these factors. All right, so let's look at this political cartoon. We have three stores here. So this first store is called Everything Under 99 Cents. Looks pretty cool, so you know everything in the store is gonna be 99 cents or less. We've got some people going into the store looking at the goods. We have here in the center Dollar Store. So here's Dollar Store. Everything in that store we can believe is a dollar. So take a look at the gentleman here, the store owner. He looks a little frantic. The store itself just looks crummy, like it's falling apart, not doing very good business. There's nobody in there. Let's take a look at the store over here on the right side. It is called Two for One Dollar, and it is their grand opening. So we are led to believe that everything in the store, you can get two things in the store, and it will equal one dollar. We see people going in that store. So... You know, just like our dollar stores that we have here, we've got a bunch of dollar stores, and they might be called different things, but everything is typically, you know, a dollar or around there. We have our, what is that store? The uh, five and under, I'm not sure what it's called, but you know everything in that store is five dollars and under. I think you guys know what I'm talking about, that store. Uh, get pretty good deals in there five dollars or less you get pretty good buys all right so here we see everything under 99 cents dollar store and then two for one my vote would be for the two goods for one dollar I'd be in this line trying to get into that store all right moving on here we're gonna talk about the rise of socialism so supporters of socialism felt that laissez-faire was wrong and that the government or the wealthy should step in and try to improve the lives of the working class. So let's take a look at this word, utilitarianism. It is a philosophy that promoted the idea that anything that is useful should be promoted. Therefore, the government should try and attain the greatest amount of good for the greatest amount of people. So this is gonna to lead to the rise of socialism. So what is socialism? It is an economic philosophy that promoted the ownership of the means of production by the public and the operation of industry for the benefit of all, of everyone, and not just the wealthy. Socialists believe that the means of production, which is the capital, raw materials and factories should be owned and controlled by society and that wealth should be distributed equally among all that there's no private property and no competition so all this money that is made goes into a pot and if there's 50 people all 50 people are going to be paid equally it did not matter um, your status, what you did in that job, everybody is paid equally. So that you can kind of think of as like here in the United States, if a teacher and a doctor, because you know we're working two separate jobs, it doesn't matter that we are paid the same exact price for our jobs that we do. 
is that fair? I, as a teacher, would say, heck yeah, if it means I'm getting more money, but it's really not fair if you think about it because the demands of the doctor's job is very different than the demands of a teacher's job. Um, so that is, in a nutshell, what a socialist society could look like. So right now, you need to take a look at these pictures here. We have capitalism. We have two people, and there's a bunch of money here in the middle, and it's pretty much like a free-for-all. So these people are free to get however much money they can, depending on their job, um, their training. So again, this could be the teacher, and the teacher could walk away with only four bags of money, and this could be a doctor, and the doctor could walk away with six bags of money. Um, it all just depends on their job and their training and how much money their job requires them to receive. And then here, down here is socialism, a picture for socialism. And this explains socialism by all people are equal. Notice their colors are the same. That's showing that they are the same. And they're each making a same amount of money. And we could say that each person is holding two bags of money. So it's equally distributed amongst all the people. All right, so the next person we need to talk about is Karl Marx, and he is going to come up with a radical socialist view. Um, he's going to write a book called, actually two books, and one book is called Communist Manifesto, and that book he is going to write with another gentleman by the name of Friedrich Engels. And Karl Marx is going to write a book called Das Kapital. He's going to believe that society is broken into two separate groups of people. We have the bourgeoisie, which is the middle class, and they are people who have things. And then we have the proletariat, and this is the working class, and these are people who don't have things these two groups would end up in conflict over the inequalities that capitalism produced. So again, you know, here we have uh, people who have good paying jobs and had the education. They are people who are making a good, good amount of money. And then you have the proletariat, which would be the working class and maybe people in factories or you know, lower paying jobs that don't necessarily require you to have a specified education and they are people not making so much money. So that would cause inequalities in the amounts of money uh, they would make in a capitalist society. So Karl Marx predicted that workers would get tired of being on the bottom of society, that they would then unite, that they would revolt, and take over the means of production and make a classless society. So here's a picture of Karl Marx and then the two books that he wrote. He wrote Das Kapital and he wrote the Communist Manifesto with another gentleman, Friedrich Engels. All right, communism. It is a form of complete socialism in which the means of production, which are all lands and mines, factories, railroads, and businesses, that they would be controlled by the people, that private property would not exist, and all goods and services are to be shared equally. So for communism, you guys need to open up the textbook to page 738, and you're going to fill out for modern communist governments. So make sure you read that little area dealing with the modern communist governments. So communist governments that are around today. And then you need to open up to 737 and you're going to have five points of capitalism that you're going to write down here. And then you're going to have five points of socialism that you're going to write here on this slide. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is it. I hope you enjoyed learning more about capitalism and socialism and communism, and I will see you all on the flip side.